my first business failed. It actually failed pretty, pretty dramatically. <laughs> I've experienced a few failures in my life, I'm not gonna lie to you. However, I've also experienced some successes as well. And I do feel like the reason why I currently have a successful business is because I've taken the time out to reflect on the businesses which haven't been successful. And I've actually managed to isolate the specific decisions that I made which led to the failure of those businesses. And I'm gonna tell you those decisions in today's video. So I've got a cup of tea, it is a story time video. If you wanna hear about all of my failures and everything I did wrong so that you don't do the same or just because you fancy a laugh then this video is gonna be for you i'm really annoyed at myself because jamie made me a tea and then i forgot that he made me a tea and now it's lukewarm i hate lukewarm tea can you let me know in the comments if you can relate it's just not as good so the five bad decisions that i made which led to the failure of my first business so let me give you some context first my first business was a clothing company i always wanted a clothing brand i actually ended up starting two clothing boutiques at a later date which i actually managed to make work but my first attempt was fresh out of uni it was a company that i think i called jungle or like jungle clothing or something like that it was fresh out of uni i was 22 which was a while ago and i was full of hope I really thought I was gonna absolutely hit the ground running and you know, the job that I was in, I didn't think I was gonna be in it for long because I was just going to absolutely smash this first business. Everyone used to say to me like, oh, you know, it's really difficult to start a business. You're probably gonna fail the first time. And I used to say, no, I'm not. I'm not going to fail. I'm going to nail this. Obviously, you know, by the title of this video and by the intro, that's not what happened. And there really are five key things or decisions that I made, which very much led to the failure of this business. So let's just start with decision number one. The first bad decision that I made, which led to the failure of this company was that I invested too much money. I didn't invest huge amounts. I mean, I feel like how much is a lot of money is just so relative to everyone. And at that time in my life, I didn't have a lot of disposable income. I was living at home. You know, I was in my first ever job, which was incredibly low paid. <laughs> So I didn't have a lot of disposable money, right, or income. So I got a bonus from this job that I was in and it was about 500, maybe 600 pounds, maybe 700. And I invested all of it in this business. Now I know that like now, for example, if I was to invest 700 pound in my business, I wouldn't consider that to be a huge amount of money. But again, everything's all relative. And at the time that was a huge amount of money. Like I was saving for my first property. And I, instead of putting that money towards my first property, I put it towards this business. The reason why this was a mistake is because I invested that money without really doing much testing as to whether the items that I bought for my clothing boutique were gonna sell. I didn't even ask my friends, like, do you like these items? I purely just went by what I liked. I didn't test to see if, you know, the audience that I had built on social media would actually buy from me. So I had actually built an Instagram account, which was a theme page, and it had over 10,000 followers. More on that in a second. But because I had 10,000 followers, I was like, well, I've built an audience. So whatever I tried to sell to these this audience they'll buy from me and it's embarrassing for me to admit that because you know I studied marketing I hadn't worked in marketing long by this point maybe like two years but still like I should have known better to have known that it didn't matter what I was selling my audience would love it like you really have to validate the things that you're selling whether it's an offer or a product you have to validate it first and you need to let your audience guide you as to what you should be offering them and that's what I did with the business that I currently have which I think is one of the main reasons why it's successful right I listened to my audience and I let them tell me what they wanted so I invested 600 700 pounds in all of this stock which spoiler alert did not sell and I ended up with loads of stock left over but don't worry I didn't throw it away I donated a lot of it and I gave a lot of it to my friends and family as like gifts for like years and years to come afterwards so it all got put to good use but it was still a waste of money. And the other impact that investing this much money upfront had on me was that I suddenly put so much pressure on myself for it to work. And it made me operate from like a real scarcity mindset. And suddenly I was kind of making decisions and I had this urgency behind me where I just kept on thinking, I can't let all of that money go to waste, rather than really thinking, okay, this stock isn't selling, maybe my audience isn't right, maybe I should spend more time on building the right audience and blah, blah, blah. Instead, what I did was just acted out of fear. So I even bought more stock at one point. I thought, okay, maybe I've not got the right sizes. Like that is a silly, it was a silly thing for me to decide to do, but I was operating from fear because I was scared that 
all of the money that I would have spent was going to waste. So it put me in the wrong mindset, right? Whereas if I spent small amounts of money on stock and kind of built my way up and tested the different items, that wouldn't have happened. I have a video where I talk about how you can actually start a business with little to no money. And it's not just product-based businesses. I talk about service-based businesses as well. So I'm gonna link to up here in case you're in the early stages of your kind of business creation and you're trying to figure out ways to reduce the investment. I recommend watching that video. The second decision that I made which led to the downfall of that company is all to do with Instagram which is something that I like to talk about a lot right so this again I was 22 so this was a while ago this is in the early days of Instagram I think I don't even know if the algorithm was a thing yet I don't even think I think it was chronological days like that's how long ago it was <laughs> the days of the chronological feed and Essentially, how I went about building my audience on Instagram was not the most effective way. I would spend all of my time engaging with other people, following other people, which I'm not saying doesn't work, but that is what I did. And I would kind of do it at random. I wasn't being targeted with who I was engaging with or with who I was following. And I wasn't doing follow on follow. Like if I followed someone, I would just follow them. And a lot of the time they'd follow me back. But what would end up happening is they might only follow me back because I was following them, which means they're not actually interested in what I'm posting about. But also because I wasn't being targeted with who I was engaging with, when it came to selling my products, no one wanted to buy them because they weren't the right audience for me, right? I didn't, I'd done the work on who I wanted my audience to be, but I didn't let that work kind of flow through with everything I was doing in regards to Instagram and marketing, which is what I really should have done. So any of my clients watching this right now, my ex-clients or members of my membership club, they'll be listening thinking, oh my God, that's why Jade hammers on about understanding your audience and how to implement what you know about your audience so much. Like this is why guys, because I've done it the, the other way before, and it didn't work and it cost me a fair amount of money. <laughs> the third bad decision that I made, and I'm proud to say that with all my other businesses, I didn't make the same bad decision, was that I didn't start building a mailing list. In fact, at no point throughout the entire time I had that business, which wasn't very long to be honest, I think maybe it was like a year, I didn't have a mailing list at one point. I didn't even, it wasn't even on my radar. It wasn't even something that I had on my to-do list and I just never got around to. I just didn't have one. Again, a shame to admit that because I have a background in marketing, so I should have known that I needed one, but nothing teaches you a lesson like making the mistake. <laughs> you know <laughs> and that's why this business and other businesses which I feel like I could have done better at I'm so grateful for those experiences now because that's honestly the reason why I have this current business and the reason why I'm able to help my clients get such great results is because I've tried it every way I've tried the other way and I know the other way doesn't work right and the other way in this context is not having a mailing list the reason why mailing lists are super important I just need some tea hold on just hold that thought I mean, if I thought the tea was lukewarm before, it's like by ice cold now. I think that I think that's enough of the tea. Um, the reason why having a mailing list is so important with your business, whether it's product or service based, is because a mailing list is where you can really nurture your relationship with your audience. So your social channels are really great at helping you kind of get awareness and get in front of your audience, right? Because you might get do a reel that's doing really well so loads of people find you that way. Maybe you create a YouTube video that's doing really well so loads of people find you that way. That's great. However, it's not enough just to welcome new people into your audience and then expect them to buy from you. You really have to nurture that relationship and your mailing list is a way for you to do that. Having them sign up to your mailing list and you email them on a regular basis is a surefire way for you to nurture your relationship with your audience and it's gonna massively increase the chances of them buying from you at some point. And I didn't do any of that. So that was definitely a huge mistake that I made. I'm actually uploading a new video all about email marketing 101 in a couple of weeks so if you've not subscribed to my channel already then make sure you do so and also turn on the notification bell thing so that you could be one of the first people to know when that video goes live because if you've gotten this far in this video it tells me that you're serious about creating a business or improving your business which means you need to watch that video about email marketing the fourth bad decision that i made was that i didn't actually officially launch anything <laughs> So I had this theme page where I had 10,000 followers. A theme page is basically a page where you focus on talking about one specific thing. So my theme page was about fashion because I was about to launch, or so I thought, a fashion brand. The thing is though, when it came time for me to launch, I didn't actually do a campaign around it. I just started, you know, sharing photos of the different items that I had for sale. The reason why this doesn't work is because I didn't prepare my audience to be ready for my brand. 
right? There was no anticipation, there was no excitement being built up before I launched, but also my audience just weren't prepped and primed to buy from me. And there's so much power in actually having a launch campaign before you launch a product. It's like I always do that now. I would, wouldn't dream of just launching something without a launch campaign now, even if it's a small one, right? Because you need to educate your audience on what's coming, why they should be interested in what's coming, why they should buy from you, the transformation that you're offering as a result of this new thing that you're about to launch. There's so much what goes into launch comms or like communications. Comms is like a marketing abbreviation of words just marketing lingo um, but there's so much what goes into that messaging and it has such a big impact on how well whatever it is you're launching is received and I didn't do that at all I just suddenly was a theme page and then I was a boutique and everyone was just a bit confused by it and I think that's the reason why I got so few sales with that business my fifth and final decision that I made that led to the downfall of this business is that I quit <laughs> I quit the business. I've done that a few times with businesses. Um, <laughs> it got too difficult, it wasn't working, so I quit. Instead of investing my time and my resources in figuring out what was wrong, measuring what was working and what wasn't working, pulling on my four year marketing degree, which I didn't appear to refer back to at any point when I had this business, which was obviously a mistake. Instead of doing any of that stuff, I just quit. And most business ideas can work if you're willing to change, adapt and learn. Like that is the actual fact in it. I truly believe that most businesses can work if you're really willing to put all of the effort that it needs in order to get it to that place. And I wasn't. I was 22, I was working full time still, I was having a great time with my life, I was going out loads, going on holidays. Like I just gave up. And I do, I, I do genuinely think I could have made it work if I didn't do that. It's not what my mindset is now, it's not where I'm at, but we all change and we all evolve. There's power in knowing where you went wrong in the past, but that is definitely probably the biggest decision that I made that led to the downfall of that business. Okay, so those are all of the bad decisions that I made which led to the failure of my business. I hope this helps you if you're starting business, if you're gonna start a business in the future, or if you started a business and it's failed and you just kind of feel like you're one of the few people who couldn't make it work. Because nowadays with social media, it can feel like everyone's business is a success and no one experiences failure. And boy, is that not true, okay? <laughs> so hopefully this video has made you feel better. If you feel like hanging around and watching more of my content, I do have this very useful video for you which is all about my top business growth hacks. I 100% recommend checking it out and yeah I can't wait to see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching.